Gentleman from the 21st District, Representative Leas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I stand in support of this bill because of a man named Michael. Mike and I met three years ago in the summer of 2009, and I can tell you honestly that it was just about love at first sight. Over the last three years, I've learned in a deeply personal way how important this issue we're voting on today is. As many of the people in this room and all around our state know, our partners make us bigger and better than we can be by ourselves. For me, Mike is my muse and my creative energy. As an artist, I see the world through different eyes when I'm with him. He sees light and color and energy and everything that's around us. I wish Mike were here today with us, Mr. Speaker, but he's a dedicated student and wouldn't leave his classes behind at Cornish College in Seattle. I even told him that you, Mr. Speaker, would write him a note for his professor, <laughs> uh, but it wasn't enough to convince him to join us. For Mike, I'm the organizer. I make lists, I do the grocery shopping, I worry about all the little details that my artist maybe doesn't pay attention to from day to day. We have our ups and downs just like every family. Uh, these days, while we're in session, our ups are on Friday afternoon as I get to go home, and our downs are on Sunday night as I return here to Olympia to do the people's business here in the people's house. Mike and I are like many other Washington families. We find our strength in one another. We do not seek, nor do we expect, the, other, the approval of other people our love is enough for both of us. This is the story of every lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered person in our state. We do our best to be good neighbors. We pay our taxes. We start small businesses. We create jobs. And some of us even fight and die to protect our country. We are all proud Americans. This bill today extends to my family, to couples like Michael and I, the same rights and responsibilities that millions of Americans enjoy already. There are many things that this new law will do, but there are many things that this new law will not do. This law will not, in fact it cannot, diminish our precious constitutional protections to the freedom of speech and the freedom of religion. Mr. Speaker, could I read from our state's constitution briefly? Please continue. In Article 1, Section 11 of the state's constitution, it says, absolute freedom of conscience in all matters of religious sentiment, belief, and worship shall be guaranteed to every individual, and no one shall be molested or disturbed in person or property on account of religion. No act of this legislature no act of the people of Washington, short of an amendment to this Constitution, could abridge our fundamental rights to religious worship and the rights to decide for ourselves what our conscience dictates. There's nothing that this bill can do to change that. But beyond the constitutional protections we enjoy, nothing in this bill changes our God-given rights to decide for ourselves what is moral and what is not. Many of my constituents have written in to me, Mr. Speaker, to share their personal moral objections to marriage equality. They have shared that because of their religious convictions, they cannot support this bill. My own senator voted against this bill in the Senate last week for the same reasons. I respect and I love these people. That's what my faith teaches me to do. But I passionately disagree. The basic mission of the church and state are fundamentally different. The church and our faith tradition's job is to remind us that we are children of God, to call us to something higher and better than we can be, and to set out the rules for our conduct as human beings. The state, our government, created by our people, has a much more limited role. The state's job is to create a community where we can live and work with one another. And this fundamental difference, I think, is what is issue in this debate. Our government exists for the simple purpose of protecting us from one another and setting up these rules in place to give us the rights to live our lives with liberty and security and freedom. As a person of faith, I believe that I'm created in God's own image. 
I don't believe there's anything wrong with me. I believe I'm exactly the person that God intended me to be. As a Christian, I believe that my Savior called me to two important commandments, to love God and to love my fellow man. As a lawmaker, though, Mr. Speaker, I believe my responsibilities are much more limited than that. As a lawmaker, it is not my responsibility to make sure that the people of our state love God. And fundamentally, it's not my responsibility to make sure that they love one another, just that they follow the rules and treat each other with respect. When our government decided to grant civil marriage rights to people, they took on important responsibilities. They took on the responsibility to make sure that civil marriage rights are available equally to all people. And in court decisions stretching back to the founding of our republic, the Supreme Court has told us that discrimination is only allowed to exist when there is a clear, rational reason for it. Mr. Speaker, there is no clear, rational reason to discriminate in marriage against gay and lesbian families. There is no evidence to support that this is good public policy. In fact, studies show that marriage creates more security for families, not less. As Washingtonians and as Americans, we retain the right to decide who we think should and should not marry. That's our fundamental rights of conscience and free thought. As lawmakers, we do not have the right to discriminate. Mr. Speaker, one of my favorite biblical lines, passages, comes from the book of Micah. And the book of Micah uh, tells us that God has told us what we should do. He has told us how to behave, that we should do justly, we should love mercy, and we should walk humbly with our God. Mr. Speaker, voting for this bill allows me to be true to my conscience and my country. Voting for this bill is an act of mercy, is an act of justice, and as I vote for this bill, I vote for it with humility and respect for the people that disagree with me. Our nation has been on a long journey, Mr. Speaker, stretching back over 200 years. This bill today, this debate on this floor, continues that march towards justice, continues that march towards freedom, continues that march towards equality for all of our people, and it lives up to that simple phrase that every child across our state recites every morning, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.